women are nothing easy. Life can be so cruel. Nothing's easy. Life can be a fool. And ladies, you get to fall. Then turns and loves. It's not my fault. Nothing's easy, growing up alone, nothing's easy, light inside your home, nothing's easy, roller skates go fast, nothing's easy, a gentle car can crash, it works just for a while, and then can't even fake a smile. It's what they're expecting Play this rough solid And it still won't affect them Show them your trust And they'll show you their last My tears are empty Nothing e -e -e -e. Thank you. Let's continue. Yes. And uh, basically, we are doing now an interview for Jonathan Pollard for the release of Jonathan Pollard. We're Please bringing, God, Amen. Yeah, we're bringing attention to the incarceration of Jonathan Pollard to yes. the American public and particularly to the Jewish community in America. That's right. Now. I would like to make you familiar with certain of the details of the Jonathan Pollard case. Jonathan Pollard was sentenced in 1987 for giving classified information to Israel. And that classified information has nothing to, had nothing to do with the United States. It was only about something between Israel and some Arab countries. Exactly. Now, 
I would like to make you familiar with an article I read here. With an article I read here. Follow me up now, will you? So yes. the people can see. Of course. This is an article written by David Zwiebel. Yes. Follow me, Avna. Yes, I do. Okay. This was written, okay, on my face here. Yes. All right. Very good, Avna. Very good. You can fool me and I'll make people familiar with this article that I've read. Yes. Uh, this was published in June of 1997 and it's a very interesting article and it will make people familiar with what I can perceive as an injustice in this Pollard case. And uh, one must uh, remember, people should remember and people should be aware of the fact that Pollard was a dedicated US soldier yeah. who did no harm to any US soldiers or exactly. to the US. Exactly. Yes. Okay, so basically Pollard was indicted. Okay. At his indictment, he was accused of aiding a foreign nation. Yes. This was the charge against Pollard because in his time working for the Navy, he gave classified information to Israel, which he received payment for. But by the way, I personally haven't heard of any uh, spy who doesn't get paid for being a spy. Of course, yes. So, I mean, people do attract, countries do attract people to spy, let's say, so-called yes. spy for them in uh, by offering them some kind of money. Exactly. Always uh, governments in the world offer people certain money or whatever the case. Um, it, you know, the government of America always said that Polo did this solely out of the need for financial gain. I don't feel it's at all accurate to say something like that because the truth is Pollard is a Jewish person and the fact was that America was withholding information from Israel. Yes. Information about uh, Israel's enemies, the yes. Arab countries, and uh, the fact that Pollard got paid for it, okay, but uh, every spy gets paid for it. He never... Yes. The fact is, you know, um, uh, he never got millions for it. He got something like uh, thousands, and that's the situation. It's like, uh, you know, I don't know. Yes, so thousands of dollars <laughs> it's not is not a reason as, uh, for anybody to risk his whole life, exactly. his freedom, his career. And he was a dedicated soldier, unlike the last couple of US presidents. Exactly, and the fact is that also, exactly as you say, Avner, that how did the different governments in the world get people to spy for them? They're like they start paying the rent or something like that, or they start giving people money. This is very well known. Yes, that, uh, that the fact is that, that um, uh, all right, that's how people become spies. Maybe. Whether it's good or not that Pollard was a spy, we're not going to say if it was good or not. Yes, That's but he wasn't even a spy. I mean, he just provided Israel with information about uh, what goes on between Israel and its and the other Arab states, exactly, which were hostile or which are hostile, or I don't know what. Exactly, yeah. and its enemies. So, as I say, the fact that the government said, oh, Pollard did this for financial gain, he didn't have any other motives for this. I don't think it's fair to say that the fact is, yes, he did get paid, but um, generally people who do work as spies get paid because maybe it's considered as some kind of a work for them. I don't know. But anyway, the fact is, that's not really relevant because the only relevant thing in the Pollard case according to my understanding is that Pollard was indicted for giving sensitive information against the United States. Now yes. all of this appears... Which is bullshit actually. What, what sensitive information and how is it against the United States? I mean I just don't understand all so, of that. And basically in this article written by this uh, gentleman in 1997 here 
uh, something very, very interesting appears, which to my mind appears to be a complete misuse of justice. Now, Pollard was indicted for giving information to a foreign country. Yes. After Pollard had already plea bargained, okay, that meant he expected a leniency on his sentence, as does anyone who plea bargains. Of course, yes. Because why didn't Pollard take the thing to court and say, oh, he's not guilty, he's going to fight it, he wanted to help Israel, or whatever the case. He could have done anything like that, but he didn't. He plea bargained, he said he's guilty, that's it. So they indicted him for giving information to a foreign country. Now, instead of indicting him for wanting to harm the United States, so he was never indicted for, for harm, posing a threat to the United States. Then he plea bargained. After the plea bargain, what happens is the government brings against him something called a victim impact statement in which they say that now Jonathan Pollard, and I'm paraphrasing, has basically caused severe damage to the United States, they've jeopardized the United States with uh, the Arab countries, and, and basically, sorry, that Pollard has caused severe damage to the United States, he has jeopardized the United States uh, relationship with its Arab uh, Arab uh, uh, allies. allies or whatever enemies or foes, are or yes. and Jonathan Pollard has caused damage in US Israeli relations okay after that now yes. this is after the plea bargain right Jonathan yes. Pollard is out of the game he's already made the plea bargain now the yes. government is bringing all these additional things to uh, against Pollard yes. um, afterwards okay there's something called the Weinberger Declaration now, Caspar Weinberger, the Secretary of Defense, now submits a document, and I'm paraphrasing again, he accuses Pollard of, of high treason, he says that this is like the worst thing ever done by any spy. Um, so, tell me something, how do you get wanting to help a foreign nation yes. from that to suddenly high treason? Yes. This is uh, um, completely ridiculous, and they brought all of this stuff against Pollard after he'd already submitted a plea yeah. and admitted his guilt. Now, yeah. um, this guy, David, who writes this article, says that it almost looks like the government wanted Pollard to plead guilty, and then it, it upped the stakes all the time, all the time, and made stronger, stronger uh, statements against him. Eventually, it basically changed the classification of Pollard's crimes to, to a, a lesser crime, to a much greater crime, and this is already after he'd already plea bargained. Yes. Now, to my mind, this is not at all just. It's not at all fair. And, um, and the fact is that Pollard has already sat in jail for 28 years. Yes. Now, whatever you think, okay, about this case, even if you agree with my opinion or not, you would surely have the opinion that 28 years is enough time for anyone to sit in jail for anything. Well, yes, that's true, for anything. Uh, I would agree with that. But there are people who do not agree. I mean, they, I mean wherever they, you can call them people or whatever, but uh, yes. Okay, the people who don't agree, Okay, but we would like to urge you in America to write to your congressmen and women and urge them, please, to write to President Obama to give Jonathan a pardon because Jonathan is in bad health, as everyone has heard, and we really feel that he has sat in jail for long enough. I don't even feel, and Abner doesn't feel, it's fair that he sat in jail at all. That's um, right, exactly. Okay. But whatever view you take, please remember something. You do not need to be afraid of jeopardizing your position in the American community that they'll ac accuse you of dual loyalty. Okay? At the end of the day, we don't need to be afraid of the President of the United States. Hashem is our President, and yes. Hashem is our Judge, and it's at the exactly. end of time that we will have to give accountability to Hashem. That's right, exactly. Thank you. And besides, uh, 
Well, the U.S. anyway spies on its own citizens. <laughs> it became a dictatorship, so it is an absurd that the government, that regime which spies on its own citizens, uh, it still holds Pollard for passing information which had nothing to do with the U.S., but, but it was only between Israel and some of its enemies. Yes, that's true. I won't take uh, your view of now that it became a dictatorship, but I do agree with you that it, uh, it started to spy on its citizens and, uh, there, you know, there were all these things after 9-11. Yes. I agree, or that were not good. Yes, the, all those excuses of, of the, yes of 911 or whatever they call it yes okay so yeah it's another song that i wrote this song is actually called jonathan yes okay and I wish we wish everyone a very lovely day yes, a pleasant that's year. true and of course we pray for Pollard's early release as soon as possible amen please God amen <laughs>